My name is Donna Page. I'm astrologer at lovinglightastrologer.com and this is a lesson on how to determine compatibility in two charts. One of the most difficult things or complicated parts of life can be is relationships, especially love, romantic relationships. And whether or not you are just getting into a relationship and are anxious or excited about how will it turn out or if it will turn out, or if you are in a relationship and something is a problem or you're feeling frustrated or the person, there's conflict and you don't know, is it worth moving through? What's going to happen? One of the things to do is to look at this chart compatibility and be able to interpret that to get an understanding of what's going on, why it's going on, and what you can do about it. Now we have two charts here to, to look at. These are arbitrary charts that I'm uh, pulling up for you. The first one, March 22nd, 1987, is female. So we want to look at this chart and we want to look at um, this other individual who happens to be a male, July 11th, 1983, and Determine, how do you determine between your chart and somebody else's chart what's going on, what the compatibility is, what are the compatibility issues, and does it appear that there is conflict that can be overcome? Because there's always going to be something, right? So how do you know if you are compatible with somebody else? A lot of that has to do with what the expectations are in your life that you can see in your life for what will fulfill your heart or soul in a relationship. So let's go back to this woman. And her son is in Aries. She's a very early Aries. Her Venus, what you look for, for emotional fulfillment and relationship fulfillment, you look to Venus because that's the relationship planet that will tell you what you value and will tell you what a person is looking for, desiring in a relationship. Venus in Aquarius wants a relationship who can be a friend. Now, what does it mean to be a friend? Well, there's an essence of Aquarius where it's like, don't tell me what to think or what to do, which is in agreement with the Aries, because Aries has this drive to live their own life, to follow their own path. There's a lot of passion there. But the Venus in Aquarius, I want you to be my best friend. And that includes wanting what's best for me. And ultimately, Aquarian energy and loving somebody for who they are with all their idiosyncrasies, because Aquarius is about unique, is a very noble thing to do. Now, the moon is in Capricorn. A moon in Capricorn is an earth sign, wants respect wants to be safe, secure, and to a certain degree does not want to make a promise that can't be delivered. Now, Aries can jump into something, but Capricorn is more cautious. So this is just the general outline. Uh, and the moon in Capricorn, the moon is your emotional needs, that an emotional need to be um, respected, take your time, but this moon is conjunct Neptune, okay? So it's not a core Capricorn moon. It has this Neptune influence, which is what is my ideal? What's my dream? And sometimes it can also mean that you, the Neptune is makes things confused, that your feelings can be confused. The ascendant is what we ascend or project to the world, Right, So how others see us or how we are um, expected, how we are trained in early life, that if we act like Leo, we'll get approval. So there's a, a very strong fiery component, especially because the sun's conjunct uh, Jupiter here in Aries. Very positive, very outgoing. But does this chart doesn't connect? Is it compatible? So we, we already figured out what's the emotional needs. I want someone who will respect me, who's not going to micromanage me, and who will be my best friend. 
Now, what about the guy? What does the guy want in a relationship? Where's his Venus? Well, his Venus is in Virgo, and that's suggesting that he's quite picky when it comes down to it, when it really comes down to what um, really committing in a relationship that he will have a list because Virgos love their list. Venus and Virgo is a list of what I want my partner, my life partner, my wife, my companion, my other half to be. The moon is in Leo. And if you remember, her ascendant was in Leo, what she protects to the world. So what this the man wants, what the man wants in a chart, will you can see in a woman, will be through seen through the eyes of what interpreting the Venus and interpreting the moon. So he wants a Leo woman, you know, and a and he has strong particular list of what he thinks his ideal partner is going to be. Now, that's just the basic core things. Does this person look as if it fits what he is desiring or wanting? Because she has a Leo ascendant, and because, so she has the Leo ascendant and a fire sign, and he's looking for moon and Leo there, it does represent that on the surface, see her across the room, talk to her, on the surface, it certainly can appear that this is a relationship that uh, where there's an attraction. I think she, she's what I want. But it's so far deeper than that, because one, we have to interpret the chart, the, the connections, right? The connections between the different planets and how they're bouncing back and forth with each other. The Many times, one of the core things people look at is the aspect comparisons. If you're looking for somebody to have great sex with, you look at connections with Venus and Mars. And here you see the Venus is opposite Venus. You want to see an opposition or a square. The hard aspect square oppositions and conjunctions are the most dynamic. And there's no, you know, there's a nice little sec, um, 60 degree sextile aspect here between Mars and, oh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, there isn't. That's Mars and Mercury. But so we have Venus to Venus. We have Mars, uh, sesquiquadre Venus. So that is a hard aspect. So there's some passion here. We have Mars, semi square Mars. That is, means that they can bump heads. But there's no Mars to Venus here. So, you know, sexually there's some inspiration, but it's not the hottest that you would ever see. The other classic signatures for long-term relationship would be sun-moon connections. If you have a sun conjunct the moon, let me put it back so you can see it in a different way. So if the moon was over here, um, like if, if the guy's moon, which is in Leo, was in Aries, that would be very good for long-term relationship. Or if her moon was in Cancer, that would be very good for long-term relationship. Neither one of those are happening. So it's not that there isn't anything that her moon's opposite and Capricorn opposite Cancer, but it's a what's called a wide orb. So there's not a classic marriage stricture here. So there's not a classic marriage stricture, and there's not super hot sex either. There's passion. You know, Mars, there is the mo Mars connected to the moon is passionate, but it's not super, you know, it's not the hottest that I've ever seen. So it's good, but not great. I think both of them would say it's probably that they could probably find hotter sex and somebody that they would be able to feel more of a bond with. The other thing 
that you look for in relationships is whether or not there is a connection with the south node. Okay, this is this is the south node here. If you have a personal planet from your lover's chart on your south node, that's a strong bond. And there is no per personal planets. What are they? Of course, they're the, the inner planets, the sun, the moon, Venus, Mercury, Mars, the close planets. Neither one of those happening. So some astrology say it would say it's like, well, you haven't had a past life uh, together before because that would one interpretation of personal planets on the south node therefore that is there isn't that instant recognition oh my gosh you know i felt like i've known you forever so how would you interpret this chart it's not that there isn't anything great and it does show that initially there can be a feeling of this person can this person can fulfill some of the things that i'm looking for in a relationship but it doesn't show long-term connectivity as you would in a classic interpretation of of chart compatibility so that's a quick easy and to the point lesson in what to look for when you're looking for chart compatibility between you and your lover